All right, here we go. This is going to be step three of the cube project. Uh, at this point, you've decided what your parts are going to be for the three by three by three cube. So, for example, I made some parts, and here's one of my parts, and here's another one of my parts, and I've got three others. Uh, and the, those five parts fit together to form the three by three by three cube, which will be my puzzle cube. Uh, the only rule is that none of my parts can be identical to any of my other parts. Um, an example of that are these two parts right here. These are mirror images, but they are not the same piece. So that's okay. Uh, there's no way I can turn this part or manipulate it to make this part. So you can have mirror images part, mirror image parts, but not the identical part. Um, okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to CAD model our parts, which means we're going to create computer files for each part. And we're going to use a software called SolidWorks 2018. Um, don't be confused by this one right here. This is for electrical design. Uh, we're going to be using this one. So you can go ahead and click on that and open the software. I already opened it, and it's going to end up looking something like this. Okay. Once we're into SolidWorks, we're going to come up to this new uh, tab. And one of the options that we'll see in here is going to be for part files, assembly files, and drawing files. So those are going to be files that you're creating all year long. Uh, but we're going to start with a part. And, uh, and similar to the project we're doing right now, you'll see that the, uh, the images, the little icons they use, are very much like our cube puzzle. This is how a lot of people learn. So we'll say we want to open a part file, so I'll just double click it, or you could hit the OK. OK, and then once the part file opens up, it's going to look something like this. Um, and in here, we have a blank canvas. We are now going to go create a part. So I'll start with something easy. Uh, maybe this, uh, you know what? We're going to do more complex. We're going to do this part. Uh, and this is going to take us kind of two steps to make this. We're going to sketch it and extrude and sketch it and extrude. And that means nothing to you right now, but it will in a little bit. So what I'm going to do, if I click on this sketch tab right here to make sure that's selected, then you'll see sketch right here where it says creates a new sketch. That's what we want, so I'm going to click. Now, the program needs to know which plane we're designing on. So we have the front plane, we have the top plane, we have the right side plane. It's not super important that you pick any one particular plane, but, but you may, as you get better at design, you may have preferences. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and choose the front plane. And it's going to set that so I'm looking right at it. Now, in order to make this part, I'm going to, I'm going to create first, I'm going to make that kind of upside down U shape. And then later I will add this additional cube on. So that upside down cube shape is going to look, I'm going to click this little rectangle right here. It's called corner rectangle. And it's going to allow me to build rectangles. And I'm going to just click and release and click and release and that made a rectangle now i'm going to make the rest of it i'm going to go to this corner and it'll auto select that corner i'm going to click and release and click and release i'm going to do the same thing here click release click release okay that's in the shape i wanted of of that okay but it doesn't have the dimensions so although it looks similar to what i want it is not what i want yet so i'm going to go to what's called smart dimension so I can now tell it the dimensions I want. Now the wood cubes, Craig, will you grab me a wood cube? The wood cubes that we're going to use to make these puzzles are three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. And so we're going to go ahead and use those dimensions for all of the designs we do. So 0.75 for every one cube length. So using smart dimension, I might come down here and say, hey, this should be 0.75. And it's going to go ahead and adjust that. And this side should be 0.75. Now this top part is going to be three cubes long. So there's a couple different ways to do this. I could say, I know it's 2.25. That's what I could put in. Or I believe in most of these softwares, I could say 0.75 times 3. And usually it'll do the calculation for you. And it says, oh, well, that's 2.25, which we already know. And this right here is going to be one cube tall. So we're going to say that's 0.75, and then we'll go ahead and do the last two dimensions that we need. So 0.75 right there, and I might say, hey, from the bottom of this to the top of this is going to be two cubes, so that's going to be a 1.5. So that is that upside down U profile that I was going after, and those are the correct dimensions. But this is two-dimensional, and we need to make it three-dimensional. So now we're going to use a feature called extrude. 
And that's what allows us to give it depth or that third dimension. So we're going to click on features. And this first button right here, it says extruded. I'm going to click on that. And it's now going to allow me to select contours. So I can say I want that contour, that contour, and that contour. And it's going to extrude them out or give them depth. And it always defaults to a tenth of an inch. Well, we don't want tenth of an inch. This is one cube thick. So we want that depth to be 0.75, just like our other measurements. And when we say OK, we're now going to get something that looks very much like what I wanted to design here. That's an upside down view. Now we designed it from the back. What I really want now is another little peg coming off right here, okay? which is kind of on the bottom front of this thing. Maybe it's going to be like right there. I want one more peg coming off. So all we're going to do is we're going to sketch that additional rec, uh, square or rectangle and extrude it out also. So we'll go to sketch. I want a new sketch. And you see this yellow box right here. When it pops up this box, it's saying select a plane or a surface. It's saying, where do you want to sketch? Do I want to sketch on this front surface? Do I want to sketch on this top surface? Do I want to sketch on this side surface? And you can see how they highlight. Obviously, I want to sketch on this front surface. It doesn't matter where in here I click, so I'll just click right here. And it just put the sketch plane on this front surface. Now I'm going to go back to my rectangle. And I could draw a rectangle on there and dimension it to 0.75 by 0.75 because I know that's what it needs to be. Or I can be a little uh, more efficient. I could say, hey, I want that to go from that corner up to that corner because they're already exactly 0.75 by 0.75 because I made them that way. So by doing that, it already locked onto the corners. I don't even have to use smart dimension. Now, if you didn't do it that way or for some parts, you will still have to use smart dimension to put the dimensions in. But for me, I don't need to now. So I can go straight to Features and Extrude. And it automatically selected that square because it knew I was working there. And it automatically put 0.75 in for the extrusion because that's what I did last time. And it's right. That is what I wanted. Now, sometimes maybe I wanted that part to come out even farther. Maybe it was supposed to come out 1.5. And if I click, I can preview that. That could possibly be a part you want, might want to make. But that wasn't my part. My part only came out an additional 0.75. So it's going to look like that, and I'm going to say, yep. Okay, that is now the part I want to design. That's exactly what it was supposed to look like. Now, mine is white, and it's really important that you give each of your parts a different, unique color, because when you assemble them together, if they're all the same color, they're going to just blend together. So you pick, pick colors that, that uh, complement each other uh, that will stand out uh, from one another. In order to do that, we're going to click on this little button right here that says Edit Appearance. And we can now go pick whatever color we want. In this case, it's white. And oftentimes, white looks kind of like a, a pale gray. Uh, but there's a lot of different ways to assign colors. You know, we could do any color we want. Um, but when we do this, just to show you this, I'm going to do it in pink. Uh, right now, it's selecting as a part. Well, maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I want to get rid of that. And I, I want to actually select as a face and say, hey, I wanted that top face to be pink and the side face to be pink. And maybe other faces I want to be uh, green. Uh, oh, I just turned them all green. Anyways, you don't want that. You do want to assign it as just uh, the entire part. So we're going to clear those out of there. We are going to select this top option, which is select part. And we are going to turn it white. And we are going to click on this. And white will be applied to the entire part. And we'll accept that. At this point, we want to save it. Now. You, uh, you should get used to saving everything to your Google Drive. It's really important that you do. It'll be the one location that you can access all of your files from. Um, all right, so we want to make sure that we have our Google Drive to save to, because all of your stuff should be saved there. Now, you'll see this little icon called Drive File Stream on my, my monitor. There's a good chance you don't have that yet. When you first use a computer, it creates a profile for you. And initially in the district, it does not link to your Google Drive. So what you're going to want to do is go click on the Windows icon on the bottom left of your screen. And when you do, if I can do this without pausing my video, uh, you'll click on that Windows icon. And one of the options under D is called Drive File Stream. And if you click on that, I've already done it, so it's not going to look the same as yours. If mine goes straight to my Google Drive, and you can see that the G Drive 
is my Google Drive and all my files are going to be in here. But for you on the first time, it's going to make you log in to your single single user sign single or whatever it's called, the single what? Sign on portal. Sign -on portal. OK, so you'll sign into there and then it will link your, your G Drive, your Google Drive. Once you do that, what I want you to make sure you do is stay really organized. Uh, so within your folder, I made an example. I created a ninth grade folder. You should do the same. Inside your ninth grade folder, create a folder for all your different classes. And when I say create a folder, if you click this little icon up here, it's going to create a new folder. And you could create folders for all your different classes and give them their names. Within engineering, each of our projects should also have a folder. This is the cube project. So go create a new folder, call it the cube project. And inside the cube project, you'll sh save all your parts. And you can see the little cloud. That means it's saved to the cloud, which means you can access it from anywhere. If you're working at school, or you're working at your house, or you're in Timbuktu or something, you can access your files there. Um, so you'll, you'll save all your parts here, and that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Now, when you use another computer, if you sit somewhere else in the lab and use another computer, it's going to create a new profile for you when you log on, and you're going to have to do the drive file stream login again to get it to sync your Google Drive. OK, so go ahead and save your parts into your Q project engineering ninth grade folder so that they're all organized make uh, you're probably gonna have anywhere from four to eight different parts go ahead and make each of them save them each in there i save them by color so i have a green part and a pink part and the red and this part will be my white part when i save it okay good luck